one of the founders of the Black Elephant Party. I'm also one of the main ones running it. I just want to ask y'all a question. What was the first weapon that was banned when Africans were stolen from Africa and brought to America? Drums! Yell it out. Drums! Yell it out. Drums! Drums. Drums was banned because it was our greatest weapon. It was a symbol of culture because culture is our greatest weapon. I'm gonna just point to somebody randomly in the crowd. What culture are you from? Yes, what's your culture? You're European and what? You're European and native. Okay, we're gonna need to do a blood test to make sure this white woman is European and native. Just saying, just saying, I don't know, I don't know. It's cool though, it's cool. Culture is very important to all of us. Culture is what runs this country. Culture has been the weapon that's been used against us. Does anybody know when whiteness was created? Do you know when white was the first, was first put on paper? Ooh. Ooh. I thought it was 1693, but you're, prob you're probably, 1690, okay. Okay, first time it was on paper. There was no, there was no such thing as race before 1691, 1693, you know, there's a couple answers. There was no, there was no white before that. White was created to create black. White was created to put top, to white male top. White male wealth top. Black, poor, female at the bottom. So do y'all know who we really should be supporting in all these marches? Who've been putting in all the work? Who's behind every movement and has been pushing it forward? Black yes, black women. Black women. You know who else is black besides a black male? Black trans. Woo! Well, they ain't black because they don't identify with this, this shit, huh? They ain't black, but they are. Everybody's black. So we all need to be in solidarity together. And we all need to bring back our cultures and build a culture that is unified. And I'm talking about African people. I'm not talking about white. You guys gotta go ahead and get your own culture. All of you. Because white culture is genocidal. White culture is US imperialism. And that's what we're trying to get rid of. US imperialism. Y'all are European. You're not white. I'm African. I'm only black to resist the white that was created in 16 whatever. I have to be black because I was stolen. My family was stolen. My mom was a sex worker. I'm the product of sex work. I'm a trick baby. And that was created by this culture, white culture. We see all these mentally ill people out here in the streets and we say, oh, they're crazy. But this culture created that. It created that insanity because white culture is anti-nature, not European culture. It's European indigenous culture, I should say, because European culture is white culture now. Culture is the weapon. And that's why they banned the drum from Africans. So we lost our culture and didn't have shit but to learn from white slave masters. And they split us all up to make sure the Ashanti and the Congolese and the Angolans, all the West Africans weren't together. So we couldn't perpetuate our culture. It was, we got lucky with Gullah Geechee. Y'all probably don't know about the Gullah, but they held on to it. They, they created a new culture. But for us, we have to destroy U.S. imperialism. It's not about fuck Donald Trump, it's about destroying U.S. imperialism. It doesn't matter who's in office. I don't give a fuck about Obama. That's not blackness. That's not African. I could give a fuck if he's a first generation African. 
If he's perpetuating U.S. imperialism around the world with AFRICOM, then he's perpetuating the enslavement of his own people. And I know for the Black Elephant Party, all roads lead to Africa. As long as Africa is in chains, none of us will be free. None of us. As long as we don't respect black women and black trans, none of us will be free. We're all the same people. And as long as we are practicing white culture, none of us will be free. Are y'all hearing me? This is not a picnic. This is not a party. We're decriminalizing Seattle so we can go to our long-term goal and free in the motherland. It doesn't matter, bro. That's why I, I hate to say it again, but as long as Africa's, I don't hate to say shit. As long as Africa is in chains, none of us will be free. And as long as all of us practice white culture and don't return to our culture, does anybody even know what my culture is? Somebody tell me what my culture is. Y'all don't know. My culture is the black radical tradition. The black radical tradition was born through slavery. The black tr radical tradition was born in resistance to assimilating to slavery and being cool with slavery. There's been maroon, maroon in, uh, uh, encampments created all over th uh, through the last 450 years to escape slavery. The black radical tradition came from the ma'afa, which means the great, it's Swahili for the terrible occurrence. And that's where the black radical tradition came from. So for us over here in America, appreciate it. <laughs> for us over here in America, the black radical tradition is our culture. And that culture has to be rooted in returning back to our African cultures and uniting with other African folks who never lost their tribal culture. But we also don't want to practice tribalism because tribalism will only perpetuate what? Whiteness, US imperialism. What tribalism will only perpetuate what? Whiteness is U.S. imperialism. Whiteness will only perpetuate, or excuse me. It will only perpetuate what? Whiteness is U.S. imperialism. So say it with me. This is not a party. This is not a party. This is not a picnic. This is not a picnic. Decriminalize, decriminalize Seattle. Decriminalize Seattle. Number one, what is our, what? What is, go ahead, go ahead, one. And what is our long-term goal? Free the motherland. Free the motherland. Because if black lives matter, then African, then the African, the African continent matters. And that's what you all need to remember. This is, this is not over. This is not over even when they come back. And if we got to break in here, and we ain't burning nothing down, and we ain't breaking in. I'm not, so you know, <laughs> black people don't break in stuff, okay? Let the white bodies do it if they want to do it. But let's not us do it, because uh, we're trying, what's, what's the third demand? We got enough in there, and when you're black, it's harder to get out. So I just want to end with that and making sure that we are practicing a culture that is conducive to all people, not just me, not just for Africans, not just for Mexicans or Nicaraguans, excuse me, my brother, <laughs> Nicaraguans, not just for Habesha, not just for whites, for everybody. So thank you for the time. Please stand up. Let's decriminalize Seattle because this is not a party. Stay with me. Decriminalize Seattle. Invest in the community. Invest in the community. Free all protesters. Free all protesters. And if you don't free all protesters, we'll be at King County Jail. Woo! Just remind y'all, there's a virus going around, so you see a lot of speakers here. Hey, I like the mic. Stay safe. So I know I see a lot of good speakers in this crowd. So, um, my name is Rial Johnson. I'm the Sohomish County Criminal Justice Chair of the NAACP. Um, so I'm out there in Sohomish, and I want to. I'm, just good. I'm glad to get a chance to speak to let y'all know that about what's also going on around the rest of the state. It's not just happening here. You are making waves around in other counties.
ways around the other states. We're making ways around the whole country, and the world is watching. So, like you know, people said before, this is not a party. This is a mission, and we have a mission to accomplish. There's a lot at stake, and we cannot relax. And you can relax. You know, you have some fun, but like, we gotta stay vigilant, real vigilant. Keep our heads on a swivel, and make sure that we are ready to act at any time. They are not gonna let this slide. They're not gonna. They're gonna try and take this back, and we gotta be ready to mobilize at any second. So a little bit of what I do is I do organizing around the state. And there's gonna be a lot of stake, there's gonna happen, the city council vote's gonna happen, there's gonna be a county vote gonna happen, there's gonna be a statewide vote gonna happen. And it's all gonna start what happens here. If we let up for one second, if we let anything, if we do not get the demands that we want here, we're not gonna get the demands for the rest of the state. So my county is dependent on you, Pierce County is dependent on you, Yakima is dependent on you, the whole state's dependent on you, Florida, Atlanta, New York, Texas, everyone's dependent on you on make sure that we make a stand here. We do not give up. We cannot let up. So your duty after this, it's Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday. That city council checks in for work tomorrow. I expect everyone here to have called their city council member. If you don't know who your city council member is, you gotta find out. And after that, you gotta go call your state rep and your state senator and make sure that they vote. And not only after we defund the, 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 the police here, we're gonna defund the sheriffs of King County. And then we're gonna defund the prisons up at the state level. We're gonna defund everything. As a matter of fact, I want a refund. I want my money back, because we've been wasting our money on this for years, for, for decades. And I've been telling people, it's, it's time for a cost budget analysis right now. We are not getting our money's worth out of these dudes. Because, and, and it's like, we, we, we need to not just defund them, we want our money back, because we could put our money to a, a lot better things than killing us. So, like I said, it's, it's, let's say, find out who your city council member is, and then your county council member is, and then your state rep, then your federal rep. It's a lot of, it, it sounds boring, it's monotonous, and that's how they want it to be. They want you to be bored and tired and impatient with it and you go home. That's what they want. And then the people with the privilege and the money get to be able to call and do their votes and everything get passed without you even noticing. And that's how we got here in the first place. So make sure, like I said, I, 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 I have never been more angry and more hopeful in my life before me for this, seeing this. And there's been a lot of sacrifice to get here. And not just us at but when we did these last week, but generation before this. And my father right there, who shipped off to Vietnam the day that Martin Luther King was shot. And he came back and made me and my brothers so we can carry on this fight and do this and make sure that this stuff happens and is successful. There's a lot at stake. We cannot relent, we cannot fail, because there, it's, it, there's been a lot of stuff like this I've seen before, and in reform, for reform after reform after reform and they still keep killing us and killing us and killing us and it doesn't matter what we make illegal because they just keep breaking the laws and they don't get punished for it so we i've given up on reform i was a campaign manager for initiative 940 and we got that qualified and then it got compromised and they're still killing us and not a single cop has got prosecuted since then so it doesn't even matter the only way we can do this and fix this is just take their money get our money back not just the police here, it's the sheriffs here too. It's the sheriffs of my county. I got a white supremacist just got elected in my county. And we got police all over the state doing the same thing, it doesn't matter. We cannot, making new laws, making new things illegal. This whole eight can't wait. We got six of the eight here in Seattle already. It didn't make a single difference. So like I said, we are not getting our money's worth out of the police. Not only that, like, because they're just simply bad at their job. They don't even arrest half the time. They get going, their clearance rates are low. They don't even report paperwork. And they're getting over $300,000 a year. I used to play in the NFL. I never make that. So like, it is time to call it in, turn on our receipts, and tell them we are not getting our money's worth. We are not happy with the service. And we want our money back. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. I see a lot of talk about 
reform, change the language, defund is too, is, is too harsh, if you go too far. No, we got to keep pushing as far as we can. Because if we do, as soon as we, we step back, they're going to take you to give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. There's too much at stake. We are all watching, and we're dependent on you. And we, I'm watching with hopeful eyes. I'm not here to criticize you, I'm here to praise you and thank you for the movement that you, everyone that here was here taking tear gas to the face. I appreciate that, I thank you. Because I know what it's like to have a gun in my face by a cop. And I grew up in the suburbs, and it still happens. So I said, so many people are relying on you. When you look back at what, you, what happened, you're older, are you gonna look back and say, oh, I came here for a party, or I came here for a mission? Because there's time, all kinds of times to party. I've been to a lot of parties. But I ain't, this ain't, they ain't never had no party that made me feel like this. So do not relent on the mission. Like I said, keep showing up and be ready. They are not giving up. They are not giving up that money. I know, what the, we know what these people are like. So like I said, I really appreciate everyone being here. Like I said, the whole state. I'm going to be organizing my ass off out in the rest of the state. And when it, and when it comes to, after you, if you're successful here, you're going to create success elsewhere. You're going to create success in my county. You're going to create success in Olympia in the session when I go after fund, defunding those prisons, getting our money out of there, and freeing our people. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of freeing our people, Maybe. there is a superwoman black world, black superwoman right now that is trying to free the protesters right now. She's representing the protesters. She created a website and a GoFundMe. She is a civil rights attorney named Shade Smith right over there. She created dismantle.us. Dismantle.us. Go there and donate to that site to help so we can get more lawyers on these cases and free those protesters. They have rights. They always have rights. You always have rights. Make sure you learn them. Because other people, the more you can stand up, the more you know your rights, the more you're going to still be able to fight for yourself. So go to dismantle.us, US, but we guess what we have to do, be able to be willing to dismantle us. So dismantle.us to help free our protesters because they are not given their due rights. They were held over weekends. There have been there are people that were arrested over a week ago and not even had a trial hearing, a bail hearing. So rights are getting violated, so do not give up. So thank you again. Please have some fun. But like I said, it's not a party. <laughs> or like, like they said before, it's not a party. Keep your head on a swivel, we should say in football. Be ready, be vigilant, be ready to mobilize at any second. And we said, defund the police and get our money back.